Time is something we wish we all had more of, but with so many incredible games coming out every day, it can be nearly impossible to find the right one for you. Hello friends, my name is Kodiak, one half of the team behind Legion Gaming, and today we're hitting the high seas and exploring mysterious islands in a brand new adventure game, Summer in Mera, to determine if it's truly worth your time. Summer in Mera is a casual single player adventure game with a dash of crafting, farming, and social elements thrown into the mix. You play as a young islander Koa, and under the watchful eye of your grandmother, you learn the game's basic systems. Like other games in the genre, you'll feel right at home chopping down trees, farming your fields, and mining for ore. It's a relaxing experience, albeit a simple one. If I had to use one word to describe Summer in Mera, that would be it, simple. From the simple systems, to the simple conversations, to the simple quests, everything is as it seems. If this game popped up on your feed because you enjoy similar titles like Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, or any of the dozens of adventure farming sims that now captivate millions, understanding this before you buy Summer and Mera is important. Now, simple doesn't always mean bad. Summer and Mera doesn't try to be anything it's not. It's clear from the very beginning that there is passion behind this project, and it comes through mainly in the dialogue with the wacky and strange inhabitants of the various islands. I could genuinely tell there were writers having a blast coming up with quirky conversations, and that genuinely made me happy. Another highlight is the overall charm of the experience. Life on the islands is bright and colorful, and as you explore various locations and run through town, it's hard not to just smile. If anyone remembers Mario Sunshine, it gives off that same vibe. You're constantly in the sun, there's a bubbly track playing in the background, and it all just puts you in a good mood. Now, sadly, that effect only lasts for so long, and as the charm starts to fade, it's impossible to ignore some of the cracks in the wall. Summer in Mara features a very basic quest system that often requires you to head back to your island, grow some crops, and then return to deliver the goods. It's all very one-dimensional, and even as you get further into the game, that experience doesn't get any more engaging. Sometimes, too much simplicity is a bad thing, and here we have our first real case of that. These types of delivery quests are tedious and add no real value to the game, other than slowing the player down as they try and follow the main story. This is the first real example of the two worlds at odds. On one hand, you have the casual farming sim, and on the other, you have a casual adventure. Trying to blend the ideas is complicated, and what we end up with in Summer of Mara just doesn't work. What it really comes back to is how basic everything really is. When there is no complexity to the way that you farm or the way that you gather items, there's only so much you can do in terms of the quest, so you'll end up spending most of your time doing these very basic chores, and that's exactly what it feels like, chores, that add very little to the player's experience. I struggled with this for a few hours as I went from townsperson to townsperson doing their bidding and feeling wildly unsatisfied with the results. For some, it may be fine, but for me, I want more out of my games. Now, one of the things that drew me to Summer of Mara was the idea of a new farming experience. I've clocked well over 1,000 hours across games like Stardew Valley, Rune Factory, and Harvest Moon, so I'm no stranger to life on the farm. Once again, Summer and Mara's simplicity is its downfall. Your actions have no consequences, and thus have very little meaning. I could plant a crop, water it, go to sleep, wake up, water it again, go back to sleep, and repeat that process until it was grown. You don't even have to water things, you just go to sleep enough and eventually they'll pop up. I don't feel like I'm missing out because there's no real timeline to keep things in perspective. Unlike other games, there's no calendar or dynamic events, and the day-night cycle really doesn't matter because nothing is dynamic. NPCs stay in place and don't have schedules, and the world hardly reacts as days turn into nights and then back into days. I was really hoping to get more out of the farming, crafting, and herding aspects of the game, but it's just not deep enough to invest in. Sure, you can sell your goods and make a little coin, but for what purpose? Everything just seems static, and that's really where the train falls off the tracks, at least for me. Now, I understand that some people really like this, but at some point when the game is oversimplified, it stops becoming fun and just becomes a bit boring. The game touts islands to explore and interesting people to meet, but if I know the end game is a lackluster farming experience, just hard to push on. So at the end of the day, we ask the question, is Summer of Mara worth your time? And the answer is sadly no. I was hoping a game so charming and so vibrant would be able to deliver on a fulfilling, casual experience, but the lack of depth ends up making the experience paper thin. I do think there is a small audience out there that will enjoy Summer and Mara, but without some much needed changes, I fear the game will fall by the wayside as other, more engaging titles rise to the top. 
For a title that touts exploration as a central theme, as well as an engaging farming and social experience, I found that I couldn't get past how basic everything truly was. I will say the game is charming, the team knocked that out of the park, but in terms of a game that I can see myself spending money on, well for now at least, my wallet is staying put in my back pocket. We hope this video helped you figure out if Summer of Mara is worth your time. If you want more worth your time videos in your feed, don't forget to subscribe to Legion Gaming. Also, we invite you to join us on Discord. Our community of over 4,000 members is spread across dozens of great games, so check out the link below, join up, and make some new friends. We also recently launched our Patreon page, so if you have a few bucks and want to support the channel even more, feel free to check that out. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legion Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.